see how many dumb faces I can make. Oh! I didn't feel like putting on makeup, so I'm glad I don't need to impress you. What you think of me is none of my business. But make sure to tell me in a personal message. All right, let's see if anyone's gonna come on live. It's kind of late, but I just thought to myself, oh my gosh, I'm totally out of integrity. I said probably 14 days ago that when I got 10 people's orders, I would read my mission story mishaps. I would read um, a piece from my book. So. Tell me where you're coming on. This is Amanda Archibald. I'm from Monument, Colorado, and I'm an author of the book called Heavy, Deep, and Real Funny. Um, where is everyone? What the heck? What do I got to do around here to get some attention? Hmm? Okay, good. I don't want to read to myself. Welcome. It's pretty hard to read to yourself, and I love to be heckled. So who's on? Tell me if you're on. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, girl. Love it. Okay. I just need someone to read to, Stephanie, and you're the only one on right now. Yeah, girl. Okay, cool. We got a good group. Hey, Leah. <laughs> All right, so I promise that I just realized I was out of integrity. I promised I would read my missions poo-poo story when 10 people signed up and bought some products from me. And that happened like a week and a half ago, if not two weeks ago, because I actually signed up 26 people. So I also owe you a um, doing my eyebrows online. That should be pretty funny. So. I have a friend that's gonna do that with me that is hilarious and just I just reached out to her so I'll get back to that life anyway this is from my book heavy deep and real funny if you'd like to find a copy it's on Amazon hey Pam um, it is on Amazon it's pretty exciting so here we go I have not read this for a very long time so bear with me should probably put glasses on. There's no light in my lamp. Scarcity around here. All right, this is called Mission, Mission Trip Mishaps. With a humor like mine, it takes a lot to embarrass me. That's true. Because of that, people sometimes want to know what my most embarrassing moment is. Really, just one? That's all you wanna know? Hey, Pam. How about the time I yelled white power instead of woman power on the microphone in front of a hundred people. That was probably my most embarrassing moment. Um, or the time I tripped up the stairs and skidded across the gravel on my face in front of a thousand people leaving chapel in college. That was embarrassing, but I still went with it. Um, my top one for a long time which I think I told this in one of my lives, was when I got depanced on the rings in gymnastics class in eighth grade. It wasn't eighth grade, it was like sixth grade. My shirt was above my belly button and my pants were hanging off my toes. Hey Jamie, welcome to humor hour, it's story time. The boy then yelled, hey everyone, look at Amanda. Hmm. I skimmed through the Rolodex in my mind of hundreds, um, but most of them are spur of the moment fun. Other mistakes in public, and then the one, the one came to mind. What's my most embarrassing moment? Venezuela. So, in college, I signed up for a summer missions trip that would take us overseas. I was super excited to do this and learn about myself and share my heart for God and with others. You know, missions trips are totally for the people, right? No, they're really to find out that you're an a-hole and you need to change some things, especially third world countries. Um, 
<laughs> That's what I feel about mission strips. Um, we learn, don't take that personal. Don't go into a debate on what I just said. Thank you. We learned to do a silent interpretive skit with music and words in their language. This told the story of Jesus's love through silent acting and music. So pretty easy, right? We would set up on a corner and do as many shows as we could. We had great costumes and makeup. I had the part of a mime. You can imagine how amazing I was. We could not make any face except no emotion face, which is pretty hard for me. And absolutely not move our eyes, okay? We had to just stay. Oh, I failed. We even did this at a leper hospital and at a city dump. No kidding. Hey, Doug. Um, while the thousands of flies landed on our face and our eyes. <laughs> what Jim Carrey movie is that where that eye, the, the fly lands on his eye because he's playing dead. It is crazy. At one point, I had a fly land on my eyeball. Okay. I successfully stayed still as it probably laid its eggs or wiped its hands <laughs> off onto my eyeball. Holy cow, I'm a weird writer. It was a sweltering 120 degrees, which means not enough water. And not enough water means dehydration, which equals the big D, which is diarrhea, if you don't know what the big D is. I was owning my part like I was in Hollywood. Sweat was dripping down my face, which created a stream of white makeup dripping onto my shirt. The sweltering sun was beating down on our bodies and my lower GI was crying in, <laughs> crying in agony. I scanned the surroundings and realized there was no bathroom on site for us because we're at a, a, a city dump. Hey, Rachel. Perfect timing, girl. You have to re-listen from the beginning. Uh, let's see. Ironic because we were at the dump. I could have just taken a dump at the dump, right? That's not great to do, just so you know. That's frowned upon in society. I should have just squatted behind a pile of trash, but I still had some pride, apparently. I leave promptly in the middle of the skit, clenched my butt cheeks together, and skipped awkwardly with my legs crossed over the stage. <laughs> Off the stage. Options were scarce, so I ran to an older lady who had been watching me through the barrios. That's how you say it. She met my crossed eyes doubled over in an abdominal twisting i asked hurriedly hurriedly donde esta el baño she grabbed my arm and led me into a room in the middle of her concrete house okay there were no doors or window coverings just makeshift walls this was in the dump people she led me to the middle of an empty room with a bucket. Okay, that's not a good sign. I didn't have time to ponder or be embarrassed. I pulled a dumb and dumber scene on that bucket. Like I took that bucket's name. I had an, a no holding back kind of moment. I questioned on if I was actually passing some organs in that whole ordeal. This is written so small, maybe I should make it a bigger font for my older generation, which is me. With no toilet paper around. No toilet paper, you guys. <laughs> I pulled my mime outfit back into submission and did the walk of shame out the door where several neighbors were hanging out right outside the door, trying to figure out what that noise was. I could not look anyone in the eye. I said gracias and bowed. 
inside I'm thinking, thank you for letting me completely ruin your house for a couple of hours. And by the way, Jesus loves you. She took the bucket right in front of me and poured it all over the floor, which was, which was slanted going down into a, a drain to allow all the liquid to flow down to the canal at the end of the room. My mouth dropped in sheer humiliation. She bowed and smiled and walked away as if it was no problem. All that to say, I truly left my mark and made a huge difference in Venezuela. <laughs> so there you go. You earned a short story, Small Tall Tales from Heavy Deep and Real Funny and a true real life story there. So thank you guys so much for being in my life. One thing I learned today again is stay in your gifting. If your gifting is to mock people, stay in that. But really, if your gifting is to encourage and love and bring joy and humor into people's lives, stay in your lane. Do that abundantly. Because that is what creates abundance for me, is me being low-key and in my giftings. So if I can give you any thing to think about tonight is what are your giftings and how often do I stay in them? And how can I stay in them more? And when I am in my giftings, do I notice I can enroll people like no kidding? Yes. I can enroll complete strangers to dance with me in the middle of no in the middle of a city. So it's fun. Keep having fun, keep creating fun. Um I thanks for asking for story time. I love when people share what they like and I like to give more of that. So love you guys. Have a great evening and sorry it's late. Um, Sheriff, you'd love to get my work out there. I would love that. And you are amazed balls too. You two lover pants. I have two really great friends on right now loving on me big time. So, um, what else do I have to say? Just huge gratitude. Huge goals were met. I have to I get to, not have to, I get to and want to recreate that for several, several months and years because I have big dreams and I'm excited. So thank you so much for being a part of my challenges when I was in Williamsburg and humor in general and have a wonderful, wonderful evening. If you want to know um, more about my book. I'd love to share it with you. I truly have never really marketed my book even. And so it's really cool when people ask me about it. So peace.